Yet another week getting started in the life of Duke Athletics, and in particular, Duke basketball recruiting. A big-time commitment a week ago as TJ Power becomes the fifth player to commit to John Shire in the class of 2023. How is the basketball world reacting to that news? And a whole lot more. We're going to discuss that and everything coming up on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on this Monday. I hope that you had an amazing weekend as Duke Athletics continues to push forward for another week, a big football win against Northwestern over the weekend. But today, we're talking all things Duke men's hoops. We're going to talk a little recruiting as this episode of Lockdown Blue Devils is brought to you by Upside Download, or excuse me, brought to you by Underdog Sign Up on underdogfantasy.com with promo code locked on and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. On today's program, we're going to talk about Duke men's basketball recruiting and so honored to be able to chat with my good buddy, Jason Jordan, the director of college basketball recruiting for Sports Illustrated. Also, as always, we would like to thank our friends at LinkedIn for being the official recruiting sponsor of the Locked On Podcast Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. And Jason, as we move forward here this week, a lot of folks able to look at uh, the commitment of TJ Power and react uh, rather positively for what John Shire's been able to do with this 2023 class. What kind of reaction have you seen as uh, the dust has kind of settled here for over the past week? Uh, same stuff, you know, a lot of um, a lot of people are just wowed by what he's been able to accomplish, um, you know, obviously in year one and now in year two, looks like he's going to have the runaway top class. We got a couple more dominoes to fall in that class, but I think I think they're going to be all right. I think y'all are going to hold on to that number one spot based off what I'm hearing now. Um, but I think people are just like, oh, my goodness, is this there? Like, how long is this run going to continue? What's the streak? I mean, 2024, you know, typically with recruiting cycles uh trends tend to carry over um so uh, that's what i got a lot from coaches like you know we know that this is clearly a trend and you know they're trying to see how long <laughs> how long they have to wait this thing out you know because it seems like the tide is kind of shifting over there to durham i love um, how last week you pointed out that you know the video the, the social perspective from duke yeah. online <laughs> How they love to market another one, and and that was just a great conversation we had last week. Absolutely, and, uh, is that kind of the noise you're hearing? Is that the rest of the college basketball world is also saying? Well, there's another one for Duke. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, but co- coaches downplay it. like other coaches from other schools. They're like, yeah, I mean, you know, they're gonna get what they're gonna get, you know. <laughs> so, you know. And it's just like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it, but you know, there are some coaches that keep it real, like, hey, man, you know, it is what it is. You know, they're going to always get top players and, you know, things like that. Um, the thing is, you know, you got to put the pieces together to get, get to um, the final four and, you know, eventually to the national championship. Um, so that's the, you know, that's the grand picture. But I mean, you know, to lay that groundwork and get at the end of the day, you're not winning without no talent, you know. Coach K even said, I've always had great players. Right. So, um, you know, he's definitely following suit there. And, I mean, he's two for two. That's all I'm going to say. He's two for two. Yeah, and we'll certainly see what 2024 looks like for him as you got to turn the page and always find a way to uh, keep improving your roster and moving forward and that sort of thing. So, taking a look at at this TJ Power commitment in particular, now five members in the class of 2023 – and if folks weren't aware of our conversation a week ago or haven't seen this quite yet, you had an awesome opportunity. TJ Power kind of partnered with you in Sports Illustrated mm-hmm. and walked folks through his commitment. You've got yeah. a story there at SI.com. Uh, what, what were your takeaways from TJ Power and this decision that he's made to become a Blue Devil? 
Um, just, um, you know, we talked, uh, we had done a story on him about a month ago and he told me that, um, one of the biggest things I took away from that initial story was that, um, the shift in his mentality and the shift in his, uh, his confidence, his confidence went through the roof in that last session in Kansas city at the Nike EYBL. And so what he told me in that first conversation we had a month and a half back was that, um, it, it was literally, he said, it really felt like a, he could feel the mental shift in confidence. And he said, he told me he's never come back down since that specific night of that game changing night, um, which set him on the course to be, to re- reel off all the blue blood, all the blue blood offers came after that, that shift in that game. And so, um, you know, when fast forward to talking to him about the commitment as we were preparing, uh, you know, his blog and, you know, the news piece. He um, one of the things he said that stood out that a lot of people were talking about was um, because a lot of people brought up the fact, oh, Duke has a lot of guys like him, you know, that fits that mold. And is Mark Mitchell still going to be there? He fits that mold. Is uh, Big <laughs> Mac going to be there? He fits that mold. How's TJ fitting in, you know? Um, and so he kind of addressed that, you know, he addressed that before uh, his, you know, because we we had it ready. <laughs> so. We were talking before and he said, you know, one of the things that really stands out is that, you know, people were kind of speculating about the talent that would be around me. And, you know, um, but he said it really made him question. Like, he's like, well, who do you think? Who do you think I am? <laughs> you know, I mean, he was on some like I'm TJ Power. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I maybe you maybe you maybe you ain't heard yet. You know what I'm saying? I, I love that bravado. I love it. You know, um, and you have to have it to play at a place like Duke. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to have it because to everyone else's point, you are going to be surrounded with uh, savages on the court. And if you don't, if you know, if you're a guy who, you know, kind of cowers in that lane, you probably don't want to go there. But he said, you know, it really got him like, you know, what? You, you better ask somebody. You know? yeah. He was really on that, and so he was like, "I." But the, it wasn't like I'm gonna be the man. It was like, "I'm. I can play. I can. I can hoop too. Yeah. I play with these guys. Uh, you know." And he didn't say this, but he could have said, "I give all them buckets, all of them. I give it <laughs> all of them guys buckets." You know. So, but the biggest thing he said was that all of them have the mentality. Um to win. They like to share the ball, you know, and they're all confident in each other's abilities. So that's why he feels like it's going to be um, the perfect blend, perfect marriage um, for them to gel and do some special things in that class. Certainly great Certainly stuff great as stuff. always. And I can't wait to see what the future looks like for the class of 2023. Uh, now that we've got TJ Power in the mix for Duke men's basketball, a complete class, five commits. And we're going to continue to break all of that down here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. With Jason Jordan, we'll continue in just a moment. Today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to spice up the college football season. It's just so simple, as you can find ways to watch and have your favorite team, the Duke Blue Devils, play here. You can win with cold, hard cash in a single game, as Underdog has investment backing from Mark Cuban, Tevin Durant, Adam Schefter, and way more. They are always been focused on building superior products, For a fan user experience, customer support team is top-notch, the best in the business. What you need to do right now is go ahead with promo code LOCKEDON, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. If you deposit $100, you get $100 free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store and Google Play Store. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code LOCKEDON. Get in on the college pick'em action today. Moving forward here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson, alongside my buddy Jason Jordan, the director of college basketball recruiting for Sports Illustrated. So now we've got 12 commitments in the life of John Shire, the head coach, 10 of which are five stars. You've got a four-star and a three-star in the makings as well. And it's a, a time of year where content is necessary in the basketball world, and so we're always trying to find ways to rank the top college basketball recruiters and that sort of thing. And, you know, Duke fans, they definitely want to be at the top of everything. Uh, At what point is it time to consider John Shire 
one of the best recruiters in the country. Well, you got the numbers don't lie. I mean, you said it. He has yeah. 10. No, who got 10? Let me know. <laughs> I don't think nobody else has 10 in two years. I, I know they don't. <laughs> right. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, mere numbers wise, he he's at the top. There's no way around it. You know, people don't like to hear that because, you know, they don't like Duke. You know, that's just the thing. They just don't like him. So um, he's definitely currently top dog. There's no way around it. I mean, at the end of the day, he the 2022 class was number one. 2023 is number one. What are we talking about? You know, <laughs> uh, and so, you know, at, you got they got to live with it for now. You know, um, it's just it's their time. It's their it's their their their, their season for now. It's it's just a shift. And I'm telling you, man, it's just a momentum shift. And these things I've talked about this for years. They they happen. It's, they happen in waves. And it's Duke's wave. It's Duke's wave. Aside from the uh, I mean, there's clearly Duke K. Ever, when you look at basketball, that's going to happen. We understand that. Uh, aside from those things, is there pushback wanting to say this is Coach K's program still? Duke is already Duke. It was already this easy yeah. for John Shire. Like, what what are the best reasons to sort of push back on any narrative that John Shire is not the top recruiter in the country? Uh, yeah. I mean, does it help that Duke is the backdrop he's selling? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hundred percent. Right? right. Like, I mean, he's not going to Clemson. You know, because it's John Shire <laughs> and you throw him at Clemson. I'll give you a great example. Duke, um, Nolan Smith, my guy Nolan. Um, everybody considered Nolan one of the best recruiters in the country um, when he was an assistant at Duke. Still is, right? But um, when you're selling Louisville, he's at Louisville and everybody knows that. Louisville's an easy sale too, right? Um, but it is not the sale that Duke is. So brand-wise, it's just not. So and I don't, there's no shade there. I mean, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Sure. Um, so it's, he's, he's not reeling in the five stars in the manner that he was at Duke. Now, will he eventually? Yeah. Nolan's going to grab him some five stars. I'm going to tell you right now, Nolan's a bad man on the recruiting trail, but when you're selling a brand like Duke, where you don't really even have to sell it, the line is out the door. When you go to like, if you're a salesman, just imagine that, you know, you literally walk outside and it's 2000 people online. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm okay. Pretty easy, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to rest my voice for today. I'm not going to sell anything. It, that's how Duke is. Um, so, but give it that said, the connection that I'm telling you, I'll never forget Derek Lively. Never forget this. When um, I had just talked to John, when he had taken over at Duke, it was about a month after he took over. Well, not, I say take over, but he was announced as the coach in waiting. Talked to him a month later. Um, it's up now. It's it's uh, at SI.com. It was a, um, we did a podcast, and um, I talked to Derek Lively probably the week after um, Coach K said he was going to step down, mm -hmm. and um, when Derek committed, he said. No, you know, Coach Coach K is Duke. Duke is Coach K. There's no question. Right? He said, but I was recruited by John Shire. He said, I love John Shire. Like, I mean, the connection we made, and I always hear that word, the, the connection, 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 right? So his ability to connect with these kids um, is really – it is. It's next level. It really is because they all say it. Derek said it. Uh, Mark Mitchell said it. Um, Kyle said it. Kyle, I'm sorry. Kyle said it. All the 2023 guys have said it. TJ Power, the latest one, was like, oh, my God, it's just so easy to talk to this guy, man. You know, I could just talk to him about anything. And, you know, I know that he has my best interest at heart. Um, and so that 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 resonates with. 15 16 17 18 year olds and it certainly resonates with their families so john shire is in there winning i say i always say when you can win the den and the living room that's the mark of an amazing recruiter when you can win the den where mom and dad is comfortable on their couches or you can win the dinner table when you're in there eating um mom's home cooking because you came for an in-home visit which is in-home visit season right now 
um, that is the mark of an amazing recruiter. Because the reality is these coaches are awkward. Right. <laughs> they yeah. are. Like they're they're awkward. They because coaches have big egos. A lot of them have big egos. Sure. And so sometimes it's it's hard. They they're not all people. Most of them are not a people person, which is crazy because <laughs> they deal with people. Right? That's true. Um, and but John is a he's a people person, and he's a person who, you know, he could go into the den and and, and connect with different people from different walks of life. And this is from them. This is, you know, I, I mean, right. I've known them for years, but I, so I know that too, but this is what they say. And so, yeah, you know, all that coupled with you selling Duke, I mean, it's going to be a home run, you know? So I expect him to have a lot of success um, for a while, for a while. It just feels like for he's whatever reason. Yeah. He that... he, he's so young. Like he, and that's why he's also able to connect with 18 year old. He was 14, 15 right. years ahead of him. <laughs> you know, so it's not like he could probably talk about Drake. Sure. The new Drake album. Like, yeah, he probably could talk about that and then talk about serious stuff with, um, you know, um, technicalities with basketball and stuff like that. But he could probably talk about things off the court too. And they, they you know, they just connect on those levels. It is what it is. Yeah, it, it just feels like, you know, we, we have seen uh, folks out there at, at a certain point. Again, there's Duke everywhere. You want to disrespect uh, what's taking place from time to time. Uh, and I understand this man has not coached a game yet of college basketball. Right. And you always have to wonder how much are folks putting the on-the-court product into their recruiting rankings as right. opposed to just can this guy recruit or not. I love the Nolan Smith example. I also think to speak to John Shire, the recruiter, just look at his years as an associate head coach for Duke. Yeah. It's not just these 2022 and 2023 classes. Yeah. As soon as Jeff Capel left, who, by the way, did a really damn good job of recruiting Duke basketball and yeah. went to Pitt, it's been hard for him to sell that program. And John Shire has done an amazing job at Duke in that role for many years. And now yeah. he's just the head coach. I mean, great point. Great point about Capel, my man, too. But you know, you sell in Pittsburgh as opposed to to do. Sure, and he'll tell you. You know, like it's, it's it ain't totally different. Thing. And and there was no when Capel was uh, Coach K's right hand, nobody in the world would have argued that Capel wasn't the best recruiter in the country. You know what I'm saying? Like, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> when I tell you the man put the Zion Williamson thing alone, I mean, he's forever a legend for that. <laughs> forever a legend for sure. that. I mean, it was the greatest greatest story that i'm gonna have to tell one day but it was a i mean i'm talking 11 and three-fourths hour he pulled that one off i mean whew, yeah. yeah i still remember the text i can't i can't wait for that day that's whenever that story comes <laughs> out as, as we get a little bit further removed that's going to be absolutely epic yeah all right let's talk about this duke basketball team some news in the class of 2024 and we're going to do that here in just a moment on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. Do want to let you know about our partners over at LinkedIn. As you gear up for fall, you need to make sure the right people are on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find those candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job at linkedin.com slash locked on college, linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. All right. Welcome back in. It's our final few moments of today's episode of locked on blue devils, JJ Jackson, alongside my buddy, Jason Jordan, the director of basketball recruiting for sports illustrated. Another story out that I want folks to go check out at si.com Trenton flowers. We've talked about him a good bit over the last few weeks. Uh, he's saying he wants to release 13 schools on October 13th, uh, which is a fun number to put out there. And uh, Duke hasn't quite offered yet, but we've talked how much it means to him to, to just have Duke a part of the conversation and that sort of thing. Yeah, 
Definitely. Um, you know, well, he he's on a bash about admitting that he grew up a Duke fan. Take a number, right? Heard that one before. <laughs> right. So um, yeah, he, you know, he's definitely um been in constant contact with them per his per what he tells me. And I do know that um I think they're planning to get down to see him this week. Um, because you know, the obviously you know the recruiting period has started on September 9th. So um he just, he just got the offer from Carolina. He's starting to get offers rolling in. So what he told me was about the list cut. He wants most of, if not all, of the schools on in thirteen um, to ha- to be offers. Um, and he did say he didn't say names, right? He didn't name the schools, but he said, you know, if he feels like an offer is coming, he would include that school in the list of thirteen. Um, and he said he would probably only do that with one school. So I don't know. I don't know who he's talking about. <laughs> I, I can't I can't speculate. You know what I'm saying? Um, but but, you know, I, I, I think um, I'll say this, though. Um, one of the things that really stood out with me and um, what I've talked, I'm actually going to be down there with them tomorrow, more than likely uh, at Combine. So one of the things that really stood out to me with Trenton is that he is dead set on not like going the conventional route, if if that's not what fits in meaning. Um, if it's just, it, he's he's dedicated to going where he can flourish and where the opportunity is there for him to flourish in year one. So, I mean, he's taking a, an official visit to Georgia State, you know, and that's not something you often hear from a five-star, no shade to Georgia State, but let's keep it a stack. Like, that's not something you hear from five stars every day. Right. Never, yeah. So I think he's showing that, you know, hey, my 13 may not look like what you consider a five stars 13 should look like. And he kind of like takes pride in that because he's told me multiple times, like, I'm just telling you, it's going to be people are going to be shocked by my 13. So I would expect a lot of, you know, because, you know, he like a lot of guys are starting to, you know, do your research. You look in the NBA. Uh, there are more McDonald's All Americas in the G League and or overseas. You know, I just saw one last month. Uh, right. You know, he said, "Oh yeah, I'm going overseas." Like you know, um, so you know, you you have, you really the, you, the fit is the most important thing. The opportunity is the most important thing. And so I think kids are starting to catch. You look at the teams in March. Uh, a lot of them are taking down your favorite your favorite five star loaded teams. You know, with these mid majors and uh, even low low majors. Hello, Kentucky. Uh, so, you know, I think he's he's fitting that mold. And you, but he did say this. He said, if the opportunity is there at a blue blood or a big name school or power five, then that's great. <clears throat> if it's not, then that's great, too. So um, I, I'm curious to see what his 13 is going to look like. I think that we'll probably um, probably do a follow up around. Yeah. That time. So, uh, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be about a about a month away from that cut down. And again, we would expect uh, Duke to visit at some point this week. Maybe an offer comes along. This is a top 10 player in the country too. It's not like this is, we've talked about um, kind of coaches waiting a little bit to give those offers out. Like Trenton Flowers is definitely someone who deserves uh, an offer at some point. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's, I mean, six, eight long handles the ball like a guard ball on the string you know, scoring at all three levels, super athletic, plays with an intense motor. Um, so he's definitely a guy who's going to fit the mold of a guy who would certainly fit in at Duke and certainly fit in anywhere. Jason, it's always a pleasure to chat with you each and every week, talking basketball recruiting and talking about the Duke Blue Devils in specific. Thanks again for doing this, and I look forward to talking to you again soon, okay? Always a pleasure, man. Look forward to it. That's Jason Jordan, our good buddy, the director of college basketball recruiting for Sports Illustrated joining us here on Sports Call today. And that does it for another great episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Thanks so much for your support. As always, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Recently went over that 500 subscriber mark, which is amazing. Your support means the world. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. We'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.